Hello everyone, I'm Allison Martin and welcome to this, our second edition of Community Conversations with Mayor Jerry Abramson. Mayor, we've had a lot of great things going on since the last time we chatted. That we have. A lot of new initiatives and I know one of the really important things that you've been watching and viewers have been wanting to know about is the recent ruling um, by the judge following the appeal of our new smoke-free ordinance. You may have noticed that it's getting harder and harder to find places to smoke these days. As of July 1st, restaurants, bowling alleys, and even bars don't allow you to light up inside. In Judge Clayton's language uh, of her decision, she makes it very clear that in her opinion, Louisville has the right to ban smoking in public places. In fact, she quote, uh, let me quote her, she says, quote, it is within the purview of local governments to enact ordinances which prohibit smoking to protect public health. Um, that's great news for the health of this community, for our kids, uh, for the community as a whole. In her ruling, uh, uh, Judge Clayton did strike down the exemption for Churchill Downs saying that it violates the state uh, constitution, actually the e Equal Protection Clause of the Constitution. So, Mayor, I know that that's a lot to for people to understand that we just recently passed the smoke-free ordinance that eliminated smoking in virtually all public buildings, restaurants, bars, and it excluded Church Churchill Downs. And now, explain to, to viewers what exactly happened and, and what the judge's ruling means. Well, there are a group of individuals in the community that filed the lawsuit questioning whether uh, the ordinance met the state of Kentucky Constitution and the Constitution of the United States. Um, and so a part of their complaint was focused on the fact that Churchill Downs received an exception. And uh, they alleged that they felt the exception was not founded based on any reasonable argument and that therefore it should be stricken from the legislation. That's in fact what the trial court decided. Uh, the trial court decided that the exemption, exemption did not have any basis in law and as a result uh, it no longer would stand and therefore Churchill Downs as well as every other public facility, office, industrial facility, restaurant, bar, etc. Uh, are now all uh, smoke free. Now the case goes on in the sense that nobody is appealing that decision so mm -hmm. Churchill Downs as of uh, uh, the next two weeks I think when the uh, decision from the judge becomes a factual and a, a final decision, mm -hmm. um, Churchill Downs has said they will comply. But in December and beyond, this group of individuals that have filed this lawsuit still want to argue that the overall ban is, uh, uh, is violative of the laws of Kentucky and the federal government, and so they will have a hearing. Now, uh, other decisions in Kentucky in the past has clearly, have, have clearly set forth that it is constitutional under the public health responsibilities of a city to in fact have this ordinance passed. Uh, they have the right to challenge it. They are challenging it. We feel confident that we will be successful and we will continue the ordinance as it exists with the only change being that Churchill Downs now will be treated as every other public facility in Louisville and Jefferson County. And obviously this could be a while in the court system as the, the appeals work their way through, but as far as people who are out at restaurants and, and things like that with their families, the bottom line is our Department of Public Health and Wellness is out enforcing the current law. That is correct. The, the plaintiffs, the individuals who filed suit, tried to get an injunction that would enjoin us from doing that until there was a decision in the case. But in fact, the courts have said, no, we're not going to stop the, the city because the presumption is with us that we have the responsibility uh, to provide uh, public health and safety for the community. And that's the basis for this ordinance. So every facility from bingo hall to restaurant, from beauty parlor to Churchill Downs, uh, will have to comply. And we respond to complaints. That's the, way we, that's the way we handle this ordinance. So if an individual is in a public setting and there's someone that's smoking, inside that building, inside that facility. If they call Metro Call 311 and say, this happened at this location on this evening, we will in fact send inspectors out to do an analysis. And if found to be factual, we will uh, cite those, those, those uh, individuals that own the building or own the, the business. But the bottom line is we need your help because we don't know that it might be going on unless someone gives Metro Call a call and informs us of the situation. That's exactly correct. 
Well, we've all said, and, and that, that's been your major point with the smoke-free ordinance, is that it is about public health and wellness. It is, is about public safety for families in this community. That's right. You know, when, when Philip Morris on its website in the second paragraph says that secondhand smoke is injurious to the health of human beings, that ought to end the argument. And when the physicians in this community and across the country come forward, especially those in pulmonary and lung issues, and say it is in fact injurious to the health of human beings, public safety and health comes first. That's why so many states have now statewide, that's why countries in Europe have banned smoking throughout the entire country, and, and cities across the United States are following suit. And speaking of public safety, um, since the spring, the mayor has helped launch the Keep Louisville Safe campaign, which focuses each month on a different crime prevention topic. This month's topic is the new Campus Watch Safety Program. 